This speaker is so brittle. A uh, little dog hair teared off. Well, it just came off when I tried to protect the speaker by covering it. And I have one little piece of paper right there. And I have some watered down Elmer's glue. And just tack that little piece back in. I'm going to put the remaining little missing piece back in when that glue sets up. So, boy. Put the dog ear back. We'll patch that little hole there. This will dry up nice. This speaker is very dry. I haven't even started to tear further just touching it. So let's just leave it at that. We'll patch that one little hole and cover it so while we're working here we don't disturb it. Okay, again day two on the speaker. Microsurgery. A little bit of Elmer's glue mixed in with some water and my spudger. and the glass I have the magnifier but the other glass so you can see and I've put that paper every piece of paper back exactly where it belonged we'll check it out once it dries it'll be fine that will do it for the speaker we're gonna cover it and stay away from it okay here's our repaired speaker the next morning the glue has dried and Letting out a little air space, it's, uh, it's good to go. We'll doctor it up once more and we'll cover it so it can't be accidentally uh, marred. Okay, this I is the bottom of the high voltage chassis on the Sentinel. Just want to give a quick uh, look around. We have the two selenium rectifiers and it looks like they're in um, series with each other. I'll check that. I'll just do a quick scan. Okay, so those of you out there have any of these. This is where all the high voltage comes in, and the point where that white wire is on the left there is where our high voltage is. I know notice they have some kind of dope on there to prevent arcing. So shield for the controls before we change any capacitors we'll just take a look at the baseline here and here's the high voltage section and uh, it's pretty cramped in there um, there's a filter network in here that may or may not consist of a uh, two caps and a resistor or it might be one component. I think I have the two caps and the resistor. I'm not sh I'm not certain on that. And uh, I want to make note here of where the feedback for the 1B3 is. This is a feedback spring and it's just under the bottom of the uh, oh, whatever you want to call it there. Here's our high voltage air coil flyback. And there's something on the other side. Uh, the mica capacitors. I want to take a shot of the other side of this. This is our tube, and uh, it, although it looks crooked, I was going to clean the glass, but I'm going to hold off on cleaning the glass because I want to see where the picture was before. In respect to the cabinet, it is a little crooked, but I'm just going to use that as a reference. Here are the components there. There's the uh, filament winding for the 1B3 wrapped around the base of the uh, flyback. And two mica capacitors there. There's no resistor. Uh, is that a resistor? See, uh, this is what I'm not sure of with that component with the purple, red, white stripe. Is that could be a, a resistor? It's not pointed out well in the diagrams. I did test the 6SN7s here just for fun and they're fine. This pin here I believe is the cathode of the picture tube and it goes right right there. I've already taken some still shots of this but I'll show I don't know if I've shown underneath of this but I'll show it one more time. I should have it facing the other way.
another selenium rectifier, power transformer leads, two green, I can't make what that color is, and uh, red, looks like brown, or maybe we'll call that yellow, who knows. And uh, the resistor right there. These capacitors, they very well could be. That's the back of the RF chassis. And when we do get to firing this up, I'll try the Variac with the 60 watt light bulb method here to see how it does. We're going to fire this up as is first to establish a baseline, as I mentioned. Okay, I got a Variac set at about. 60 volts. We're going to turn the set on and watch the current. I'll set the volume about halfway. Oh, yes, and we're drawing. sit there a minute at 60. Turn the lights off here, see if we have any signs of signs of life. Tubes glowing. Dim the lights here, see if we have any signs of life. Oh yeah, that tube is lit. Okay, we'll bring it up to about bring it up to about seventy five. We should start to hear some crackling in the speaker. We do. No? Is there a raster? There is raster. I can't see it, but the camera picks it up, see? I can't see it, but the camera picks it up. Almost an amp. Well, 0.8. Is there a raster there? It's hard to see. Turn the lights off. I don't see raster, but I swear the camera's picking up something. I don't know what is brightness. I don't, I don't hear any vertical. I don't hear any high voltage. The CRT is lit in there. We have one tube out over here. That's our audio section over here. I'm not too worried about that. I don't know where brightness and contrast. We have cabinet rear view. It would be nice if we had cabinet front view here to see what control is what. Brightness is right next to the volume control. So we'll do max brightness, channel selector, contrast.
Makes noise when you turn the contrast. I don't smell any smoke. I don't see any flames. I'm going to go up. We're going to approach 120 here. Do you see? That's bizarre. You turn the contrast and the volume goes up. Not a very bright picture. We haven't tested that tube, but it does operate. If I can get a signal in on this or not. It does have raster. Not very bright though. Not a very bright tube to me. Of course, I guess they never were. All right, with some lights on here, you can barely see that. We're still under an amp here. Well, it's flickering a little bit. Go up to full. I don't think going up to full 120 is going to help things here a lot. Switch over. We have a weak raster, full brightness, and contrast. We'll have to test this tube with the CR70 to see if uh, I should go further on this or not. I should check that. I'd like to check that high voltage. Okay. I would like to check the high voltage. Trouble is checking the high voltage, it's underneath that high voltage chassis. I don't know if I can get my probe in there or what point to get to without uh, shorting anything out. So we'll work on that later, but that is a very, very weak picture. Okay, that's it for now. Okay, I've got the chassis on point Y. I have it on its side and we're going to just power it up quick and see one more time what we get. high voltage here. Get some focus. I do not see any raster. raster I can see it about my high voltage I believe that's point Y this is a terrible situation here okay am I at 120 volts yes I am so I'm only getting about 2,000 volts everywhere I probe around here and this is the area because that's the control that uh, point Y goes to. So probing around, the most I get is about 2,000 volts there. So, um, yeah, that could be the capacitors. I don't know. I'm going to test. We'll have to test the tube to see if the tube itself is good. I read one other article where the high voltage was down and that was causing the problem. So, we'll start there. There's our baseline. I was a little nervous doing the high voltage while holding the camera. I had one Traveler TV with an earlier digital camera. All I did was place my hand on the chassis. I don't know if I had it isolated or not. It was a series set. And my lens on my camera closed and it killed the camera. The AC, whatever was going through my body, killed the camera. It actually was a Pico fuse inside the camera and that was in about 2005. The first digital camera was uh, quite expensive and the uh, Traveler 
by holding it in one hand, killed it. Anyway, that's it for now. More, more in the next video. Okay, I'm going to finish up the uh, end of this repair part two with a little lesson here, a confusing lesson to some of you, and, and me included. These selenium rectifiers here, it's a very blurry picture, I, I can't, it's not really clear here. I'm talking about M2 and M3, I don't know who's M2 and M3. But my point I want to get is diodes polarity, okay, in the way I was taught. I was taught the AC always is at the anode, okay, it's just maybe a voltage doubler, I, I don't know, I'll look more into it, but anyway, I was always told AC is always connected to the anode anode of the diode is positive and if you look this up this is what's confusing nowadays anode is positive cathode negative everywhere you look anode positive they're telling you this is drilled into my head anode is positive and I think what they're doing is electron flow versus current flow because the diodes in this set these seleniums are marked plus and K on the cathode right there they say plus and K and I hooked something up that way once with that being plus and of course they were in backwards and I, I, I blew the circuit out and here's our diode you know us here's a just an example with diode with the diagram we all know it's a one-way valve we it's been drilled in my head a million times what I want my point I'm trying to make here is what's confusing to me these diodes are marked cathode plus cathode plus which contradicts the diode polarity with plus being the anode. So if I were to hook this up according to plus, you would put the diode this way, which would be backwards, and that would be very bad. So is it something they did with the with the seleniums? Are they are they marking it plus in reference to current flow versus electron flow? That's got to be what it is, because I've been thrown by this before. Okay, they've got the little arrows going this way. And the SAMs, the SAM scan here, nice going here, is uh, I don't have that part of the of the schematic. It's just, uh, I have to contact them and have them rescan this, because they've done this before. That scan is the power supply section I need. Here's M1 over here, and it's it's drawn anode cathode, and that's on the other chassis, which is not handy at the moment. But uh, I want to replace the selenium diodes. I've done it before, but I'm thrown by this plus cathode, plus cathode. That doesn't make sense when everybody tells you cathode is negative. Cathode is negative. I don't know why they do that. So this should be a representative uh, circuit with two diodes of these selenium rectifiers. Cathode, 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 cathode. 